Well, it's Cords and Coffee from the dot com warehouse. Everybody's working hard, but me apparently. There's that. The Life Aquatica. Good old Greg. There's Peyton. There's Nash, you know. And of course, Chase. And his alien friend that serves as a moral compass along his journey. <laughs> here we go. Let's go back here in the back real quick. We're going to talk about passing cords today. That was Nash's idea. Passing cords. Here we go. I got an eyebrow from Greg on that. Passing cords. What are passing cords? Passing cords is a cord that you do just for a second. It takes you from point A to point B. We're going to talk about it. First, let's look at these guys. There's Josh and Danny. Boom. Here's Max. I feel like I just saw you guys. There's Nick back there. Nick! <laughs> and I'm here bringing the intensity. Here we go. Passing cords. What are they? A lot of times end up being a diminished cord or some flavor thereabouts, but they don't have to be. There's lots of different options for passing cord. So let's get in Quinn's office. Let's get, look at this old guitar. I think Quinn got this in Austin and uh, just kind of one that, you know, when you sell guitars all day, you need to have something you can just kind of strum on just to help separate and parcel out your thought process so you just don't go crazy. Plus, this just has a vibe. It's an old K. Just kind of a cool little guitar. Okay, so passing chords. A lot of times the first diminished chord that people learn is this shape here. And with this shape, a lot of times you learn that you can move it, and I'll show you that in just a second, but this is your Mel Bay, probably page three or four, diminished chord shape. So what am I doing? Well, I've got my, let's start with the index finger. I've got my index finger on the third, or the first fret of the D string, right there. And then I've got my uh, middle, or my ring finger on the second fret of the G. And then I've got my middle finger on the first fret of the B. And then my pinky is on the second fret of the high E. So the whole thing sounds like this. Not the most pleasing sound in the world, but a passing chord is just getting it from one chord to the next and is serving and is supposed to be something that facilitates tension so that you're uh, next chord that you're passing to is release, right? So where does that chord come up? Well, I think the first time I learned it was in Here it comes another passing chord just then but nobody knows you when you're down and out so that f sharp diminished now the cool thing about a diminished chord a fully diminished chord where you have a root you have a flat third and a flat five is that either, any one of those notes could be the root note and so what ends up happening is is that if you look at all these notes which you have a f sharp you have an a and you have a c and then you have an E flat. And so I can just move this whole shaboing without changing anything and put my pinky on the A note of the high E string. Right? So. And then do the same thing with the C. And then do the same thing with the E flat. And then back to the F sharp. And so you, you have like an arpeggiated um, diminished chord progression right there. So if you're, you know, on this F. And then you go to like a C or F to G, maybe to G7. But it's just a chord to get you from one place to the next. And you don't have to go from F to G. You can actually, with, with a, that kind of tension, you could resolve it a number of different ways. So 
that's the first one. That little diminished shape right there. And just try doing that. So another good example uh, of a diminished chord at work that, that you're probably familiar with is that, like, friends on low places. <laughs> And then, let me try that again. My finger got on the wrong spot. So you got that A chord, and then you've got this, really what that amounts to is that is like a B flat diminished seven. So it's a diminished chord that has a double flat seven in it, right? And the cool thing about that is, is that this shape is movable. So, you know, here, here is the shape that I'm making here for this uh, specific instance where I've got my index finger on the first fret of the A and I've got my ring finger on the second fret of the D. I've got an open G and then I've got my uh, pinky on the um, second fret of the B string. Now what's cool about that is that that's still movable in the same way that I did the other one, meaning it's symmetrical that any one of those notes can be the root note of that chord. So again, so I've got B flat, and I've got an E here, so, and then I've got a G, and I've got a C sharp. So from this position, the next one would be the C sharp shape, and this is where you see the actual bar chord shape of it. So middle finger on the fourth fret of the A string on that C sharp note, uh, ring finger on the fifth fret of the D, index finger on the third fret of the G, and then pinky on the fifth fret of the B. And then I can move that up to the E, then I can move that up to the G, and then back up to this B flat way up here. And again, all I'm doing is I'm moving those shapes up and down, but what's cool is, is that if you're looking at, okay, I gotta go from A to B minor, did a little lesson on uh, Tennessee whiskey not too long ago, and you could do a just to kind of spice it up. And then back to that A. I could also go if I if I'm quick enough. Something like that, or or um, if I can get my little fingers to go in here quick. Just as a way to kind of spice that up a little, throw in those passing chords. That'd be kind of cool, right? So, uh, what's another way? Well, how about a how about a dominant seven? Get out of the diminished zone just for a second. Well, what am I? What do I mean with that? Well, sometimes, like if I'm if I'm going, um, let's just use like we're in the key of A, and we're and we're doing like um, if I want to get from an A to a, uh, I just make it simple, A to D. I could do like an A7 to a D, but I could also, remember in math when we did like in grade school, when you did expanded form where you had like, instead of saying like the number three, you had like a parentheses and you had one plus one plus one and that equals three. And that's really rudimentary example, but you know what I'm talking about, it's expanded form. It's taking the same uh, value and you're, breaking it down into multiple parts, but at the end of the day, it adds up to the same thing. Well, that's the same thing when you get into um, a lot of this, these jazzier chord sequences, because you know, you've got A to A7, but you could also express that or expand that out to an E minor seven to an A7 to get to D, right? And that kind of thinking can really keep going and keep unpacking, unpacking itself. Um, a great example of a song that does that kind of naturally, Ophelia, the falls in the window, da 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 You know that one by the band? So that, that tune where it goes from C to E7 
to A7 to D7 and then to F, right? So that E7 was taking you to A7, that A7 is taking you to D7. Well, you you, sort of, you can look at that, it's like a five of a five of a five, right? And it's sort of backing itself out, right? And if that doesn't make sense, we did a music theory lesson a while back, but comment below too, I'm, I'm happy to catch you up on that. Um, E7 wants to go to A, right? Because it's the five of A. But what happens when you go from an E7 to an A7, and that A7 wants to go to a D? A D. But then what happens when that's a D7, right? Do you see what I mean? It's dominant seven chords, the, the purpose of them, the nature of them, the um, greatest, um, they desire, if you will, to go to the one. They desire resolution. They want to point you towards the one. So when you do you know, happy birthday and happy birthday to you, gourds and coffee, happy birthday to you and many more. That's a dominant seven sound. The hello, 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 hello. That little tension at the top is a dominant seven sound. We've talked about dominant seven quite a bit, but as a passing tone idea, it's kind of a cool thing to, you know, again, like if like a gospel kind of... Um, What did I do just then? I went to A major, to F sharp minor, to E minor seven, to A seven, and then to, to that little C sharp diminished seven that I just showed you a second ago, then to D, right? And speaking of gospel -y things, like a very, like, sort of a, you know, kind of, um, kind of shout B, kind of Pentecostal sounding thing is where you have like an, again, I'm just arbitrarily an A, but you have an A chord, a B minor chord, a C diminished seven, and then an A over C sharp. You know, for like a... You know, like kind of, you're doing like a shout beat kind of thing. That sort of thing. And all that is, again, it's a chromatic bass line, but it's just an A chord. B minor seven, so index finger across the second fret from the A to the high E with your middle finger on the third fret of the B. G is being held down by the bar. Ring fingers on the fourth fret of the D. And then look, C diminished seven like we learned just a second ago. Middle finger is on the third fret of the A. Uh, ring finger is on the fourth fret of the D. Index finger is on the second fret of the G, and then pinky is on the fourth fret of the B. So, and then this is kind of interesting. So this is uh, so this is an A over C sharp, but because of the voice leading, because I'm going uh, on this B string as well as doing this on this chromatic thing on the low A. And then, right, because of that, my index finger is going to be on the G, or excuse me, the D, the G, and the B. Uh, ring finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the A. So good old A over C sharp. And then pinky is going to be on the fifth fret of the B. So you got that nice little voice leading. And that's, that's good anywhere where you can borrow like that, right? So that's another passing thing. So I'm gonna give you one more. So another passing chord idea. Think about, um, well, like just the two of us, right? This is really easy. It's just a chromatic thing. So you got, uh, just the two of us and we can live. Right? And what, what that's all about is, so that's a C major seven that I'm playing there into this B seven. And then I just got an E minor seven. And I'm walking down chromatically to E flat minor seven to D minor seven. And like we just talked about a second ago, G seven to get to, there's a dominant seven to get you back to this one here, to the C major seven, B dominant seven, and then E minor. So just the two of us. all that again I'm just 
playing those chords straight down there, and you know that chord, that's just index finger across the seventh fret from the A string all the way to the high E, with your middle finger on the eighth fret of the B string, G is getting held down by the human capo of your index finger, and then ring finger is on the D string of the ninth fret, and then slide that whole shibboleth down a half step, and then do a G7, and then back to a C major 7. So that's just like a chromatic thing. A lot of times just doing a chromatic thing, even like in the blues. Let's go back to the key of A for a second. So like if we're doing. All I did there was before I went to that D9 chord. So I've got my index finger on the A string of the fifth fret. Uh, not index finger, middle finger. I'll figure out my fingers here in a minute. Middle finger on the A string of the fifth fret, index finger on the fourth fret of the D, and then ring finger is laying across the G, the B, and the high E. So instead of just landing on that D, what would happen if you were a half step forward and kind of fell into it? So like on the end of four, right before that downbeat, right? Or you can go from behind. That's a cool passing chord, and that's super easy. Super easy. You're just basically going chromatically either a half step behind or chromatically a half step ahead and just sliding down into the into the chord that you want to play. That's pretty cool, right? So that's a lot of chords. I just flung all those at you. If you have questions about that sort of thing, you know you can always reach me. Just send me an email, natewhite at palemusic.com, N-A-T-E-W-H-I-T-E, -E, Nate White, W-H-I-T-E, yeah, <laughs> and at palemusic.com, and I'll be happy to share uh, some chord charts with you, especially if you just kind of want to see those written out. I'm happy to do that. Also, comment below on future ideas for chords and coffee episodes. This is totally fueled and uh, directed by your feedback. So it means a lot to me. I appreciate y'all watching. You guys are a lot of fun. If you want to see more of the dot-com warehouse, comment below too. There's a lot of really fun, cool things that go on here. We are, we're having a good time. And that's only possible because you guys are fun to be around. And we get to play guitar and talk about guitars and music together. And so what a great time to be alive. Thanks for being the most encouraging guitar community on the internet. I appreciate you. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next week.